it's Tuesday, 7 p.m. You're watching Digging Deeper. I am your host, Tazine. And with me, I have my beautiful friend, Hin. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. You are welcome. When I told Hin, I asked her, you want to be on my show? And she said, who, me? <laughs> and it was a text message. So yes, of course it was you. I so appreciate thanks. It. I appreciate you being here. <clears throat> so today's episode, we are talking about home. Home and the creative self. What does home have to do with the creative self and with the artist and with artistic expression and, and the creative process and all the things that come with that? So before we get into that, if you could tell us a little bit about who you are, who is Hin, and what is your expression? Okay. Um, <clears throat> hello, everybody. <laughs> uh, my name is Hin Urahu, and I am originally from Morocco, and I now live in Detroit. It's been a year and a half that I'm here. Um, I lived in South Africa before coming to the U.S., mm -hmm. so maybe that's why she invited me to this <laughs> podcast, because I've lived in a few places. Um, that contagious laugh. They like your laugh. Oh. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, yeah. That's a little bit about myself. I studied industrial design. I do more design research now than mm -hmm. I do actual design work. Um, I, mm, I love crafts and working with my hands and making things and and getting dirty with sawdust and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, what else? What kind of stuff do you make? The last thing I made, surprisingly, was with fabric. Oh. I had never done anything with fabric before. What did you And make? I embroidered a dream apartment for a lady who um who always wanted to learn architectural drafting but when she was younger because she's a woman of color she was never allowed into architecture school Ooh. or into architectural classes when she was in high school and so <clears throat> at the age of 75 she wanted to learn drafting and so um my friends and i helped her do that and then we embroidered her dream apartment into a back brace that she needed. What? Yeah. And then that was a back brace. Yep. It was awesome. And actually, a few of those friends are here. <laughs> and I'm waving back at you. <laughs> welcome, everybody who's here. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> um, wow. I feel like you're a very... Um, you're just very creative. You have very creative ideas. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because you're not craftsy in just one thing. You're craftsy in a lot of different types of things. Mm -hmm. Where did that come from? My mother. Mm -hmm. Definitely my mother. Um, <clears throat> for those who know my mom, she does a little bit of everything. And she can speak confidently about a lot of things as if she's a pro at them. Mm. And most of the time she is, which is really annoying. <laughs> <laughs> um, my mom now is retired, but she is still volunteering to teach Arabic. And then she goes to do swimming three times a week. And she is taking intensive English classes. Um, and she is volunteering with a women's organization to do events for women who are learning embroidery. Oh. So they do like little simple traditional crafts and then they do events where people come and like purchase their yeah. stuff. Wow. Um, yeah, she has done painting on glass, um, painting on silk. She has, oh. yeah. She, painting on silk. She does, she makes, see that these scarves, <coughs> Uh -huh. She makes them because one she day makes she makes the poops. Yes, because she decided one day that she needed two in our living room, mm -hmm. and so she made them. Wow. My wow. my mom is who I want to become. That's your inspiration. Yeah, that's yeah. where. So that's where you get your uh, creative interest, I guess, or that drive, maybe. Yeah, I guess. 
<laughs> I guess my mom kind of inherently gave it to me through the genes, mm -hmm. and then she sent me out there to the world. Okay. And now I feel like I am, I am a, I am a hybrid <laughs> of all of the places and the people, and the ideas and, um, and the emotions that I've encountered mm -hmm. all throughout. Yeah. Out of all of the different materials that you work with when you're like making different things, do you have one that you feel yeah. more connected to? Yeah. Wire. I love working with wood, but when I'm working with wire, I am frustrated to the point where I'm reminding myself, where the wire is reminding me of myself. Mm. It almost feels like wire is a reflection of me. How so? So... <laughs> So when I work with wire, it's like, there are different types of wire. It's either really stiff and you can't, it's like not malleable at all and you okay. can't work with it. Mm -hmm. Or it is really malleable and you could do whatever you yeah. want with it to the point where it is frustrating. Mm. Um, but then the fun comes when you are soldering wire okay. with... Um, like when you're putting in the flux to right. direct the solder so that the solder hugs that wire and so that wire now joins with each other right. and like you're making a shape and you're making sense of it or at right. least you're you want to make sense of it the way you think it makes sense right. but it's like no mm -mm. this says no i have my own <laughs> no, mind. yeah i have my own i have my own so what i mean what about that process reminds you of yourself um <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> it's like... not called digging deeper for no reason. <laughs> um, I feel like the reason why it reminds me of myself is, is because I can be... I... It is... Oh. Ah, Tizzy. <laughs> it is what? Ah. Um, <laughs> I guess I said it all. I guess it's just it's just that, you know, things only things have to make sense to me before I jump into them. But mm -hmm. then when they do make sense, then I jump fully, mm. and I can be like too impulsive, yeah, or I can be too resistant, uh. and it only it's like it's like I have I have to adhere to it. I have yeah. to I have to give it permission. Yeah. Um. Is it almost like that those qualities on the wire are two qualities of yourself in terms of being resistant or Well, being there's another all... actually. There's another thing. Because okay, and the reason why I remember this is because I was asking myself why isn't it wood? Because mm -hmm. I love working with wood. It's, and you have a lot of wood. I do. I love it. I really do. And like I follow a bunch of Instagram like antique um pages and like whatever, like Danish furniture yeah. and all that stuff. Um the reason why wire really makes it, as opposed to wood, is because wire is still correctable, hmm. and wood is kind of final. Interesting. So when, it, when you make a cut in wood, in order for you to fix it, you either have to bring another piece of wood altogether, mm -hmm. or you have to use a whole other material, mm. which is glue. But then with wire, you can correct it and you can interest you can bring it together and yeah interesting can, yeah yeah this makes me think of a lot of things <laughs> i'm gonna pause my thoughts for just a second because we have a bunch of comments uh can we see the poofs oh yeah yeah sure. yeah, yeah. God, this is gonna be quite the we are in my house by the way yes yeah, so i have no power because of this ice storm so we're and this here is the poof. And here's the poof. Yeah. I mean, obviously, this is made by an actual craftsman. I'm not going to tell my mom that I said that. <laughs> but my mom makes these. They're actually very simple. They're really simple. And I simple. like them. They're beautiful. They have these designs yeah. here. And, um, yeah, after, now that I, that I have done an embroidery project, mm -hmm. this is the simplest thing to do. Wow. <laughs> and all the Moroccan poofs have this type of design on them. Yeah. Um, not necessarily specifically this design, but they have some kind of star shape. Mm. The whole Islamic geometry. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I have two of them at the house, and they're stuffed with old clothes. <laughs> Which is good, because they're really dense, so you can sit on them comfortably. 
And by the way, all of my friends from the African continent, I just want to say that power cuts do happen in America. Yes. <laughs> it was really funny because she was laughing when I told her because our power, I live on the east side. And let me tell you, DTE in the east side is just a hot mess. So we lost power and they told us we're not going to have power till tomorrow, 1130 p.m. Wow. That's over 36 hours. She brought her dinner. <laughs> I brought my dinner heated. to be heated and to eat here <laughs> and to pack. Hi. Tapping into our innate quantum nature. Mm. Mm -hmm. Welcome, welcome, everyone. You're very stubborn, too. This must be a close who friend. Who said that? Oh, my gosh. No, don't say that <laughs> in public. <laughs> Give it permission. <clears throat> Give it permission. Mm. Um, what is this? Recipes for these wood antiques? Mm, yeah, I should send you the pages. Or receipts. Oh, okay. Receipts. LOL, LOL, I'm on this losing power <laughs> struggle bus. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hard out here. And especially in Detroit, it's, it's freezing rain. And so uh, all the wires have ice all mm. over them. And Yeah. And Rosie lives in, um, I'd, I'd say it's upstate New York, two hours away from New York City. Mm. So she's in the mountains, so she probably is. So you can relate. So severe weather. You can relate. Yeah. Man. So these materials, the ones that you're drawn to, are the ones that are most reflective of yourself. Mm. Did you know that before you were drawn to them, or were you just drawn no, to them? No, I was. I, I always liked wood. Mm -hmm. Um, but I never really thought about it as something that would be a reflection to my. A reflection of my identity up until I worked with it. Right. But wire was not, I didn't even know that wire was a material that you could work with. Because right. I didn't think, we think right. of metal, steel, aluminum. Right, right. You know, we think of whatever, like plaster and, you know, all kinds of things. Right. But we don't think of wire as another medium. To do that, yeah. Even for bigger projects. Mm. I mean, I used to do a lot of um, wire jewelry, and that's like a lot, uh, it's more fine, like in terms of, you know, adjustment, and it's really small. But I've seen art pieces where people have used mm. wire on like a... A grand scale. Yeah, yeah. really grand scale. <clears throat> yeah, it's pretty, um, it's, it's really awesome. Actually, one of my friends has his, um, his album cover. Uh-huh. Um, as a wire sculpture that looks like him. His name Does is... Does it actually look like him? Yeah, yeah. His name is John Schomer, and um, he's he's a great, great musician. Tony played with him before, mm. um, and that's his album cover. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. incredible. Um, where do you like to work? Does space matter to you? That's a good question. Yes. How do yeah. you, how do y'all know each other? And Christina said, this is nice. <laughs> we know each other uh, because of Christina, Christina. who's here. <laughs> okay, was... let me tell you the story. <laughs> I gotta tell you the story. So, Christina, so my parents were here <coughs> this past <coughs> summer, and they were visiting, and everything was great, and then the last day, we needed to go to the airport, um, and at that point, I don't drive, and I don't have a car. My husband was at work, so the... The idea was that we were all gonna take an Uber or a Lyft and go to my husband's work and then from there go to the airport. And guess who was my Lyft driver? Christina. So <laughs> the minute I entered, I immediately felt the vibes. I immediately felt like, all right, I gotta make conversation. Because <laughs> sometimes <laughs> you go into a Lyft and you're like, no. You're like, I'm just gonna no. sit back and I, be quiet. Yeah. And actually, I'm not gonna even answer questions. Um, <laughs> But no, not this time. I spoke to this beautiful woman and and uh, we spoke about music and we still do speak about music. And in many cases that has stayed as the constant theme in our relationship. And yeah. Christina is best friends with Tazine. And so eventually, eventually yeah. um, we all met. I found myself in Tazine's house in the midst of instruments. And, and that's what happened. Which brings us to space. Because that <clears throat> having a space full of instruments allows for different parts of our creativity mm. to come out. Mm. But going back to that question that came up, does space uh, does space matter when you're creating? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, it definitely does. I, my um, close friends either from back home in Morocco, from South Africa, from college, will tell you that I, I'm not necessarily a hoarder, but my, the state of the things around me mm -hmm. reflects like the like i impact the space around me and the space around me impacts me mm. and so if it is disorganized then i'm definitely disorganized mm -hmm. if it doesn't have bits of my identity or my identities mm -hmm. then i am not fully feeling it yeah. it has i have to feel a connection towards yeah. my space and i actually took a class on this in college and it was it was taught by two different professors one was a psychology professor and the other was an architecture professor Ooh. and so it was the psychology of space wow and so understanding how um <laughs> this was the question of of the semester um where is the center and where is the periphery hmm. so being in a space hmm. that makes you feel like you are a center mm -hmm. <clears throat> is conducive to attracting <coughs> is conducive to bringing about the best of you wow a space where you feel like you are a periphery, meaning a side, a margin, mm -hmm. You're is not... not a space that... Wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I learned a lot in that class. Wow. Yeah. And so, actually, we went even beyond and explored how sometimes we live in cities where everywhere we are, we feel like we are a center. And then we live in cities where we have to be somewhere to feel like we are in a center. So, for example, if you go to New York City, yeah, anywhere you are, it's booming and it's happening. Yeah, so yeah. anywhere you are, you it's feel, a center. Yeah. You feel like that's the center of the city, right? But then in places like Detroit or yeah. South Bend, or um, there are cities that don't even have a center, right? Yeah, right. Wow. Yeah, that's so interesting. Um, are you working on any projects right now? Also, are you uh, meeting? Uh, also, is your, your meeting story is fantastic. I'm glad you both followed the vibes. <laughs> How do you protect your creative space? What mm. do you do to draw your creative energy? Or where do you draw your creative mm. energy? Yes, center and periphery. Love it. So what are you working on right now? And how do you protect your creative space? That's a really good question. Mm. Um <laughs> Right now, the first question is really easy. Right now, I'm working on my portfolio. <coughs> portfolio. <laughs> so I'm actually just working on getting all of my work together into one place. Mm. Um, and I'm going to be working on this for the next month. So, yep. Rosie has been my accountability buddy for a long, long time. Nice. We've known each other for over six years now. Wow. <laughs> and she's just been my accountability buddy for a long time. Um, so that's what I'm going to be doing for mm -hmm. the next month how do i protect my space uh it's really funny because the first thing that came to my mind is marie kondo tidying because <laughs> tony and i my husband and i have been watching those episodes and it's really funny because my mom really instilled in me a lot of those ideals and, habits yeah. yeah so every change of season for example when we're bringing out warm clothes right my mom is going through a tidying phase mm. and my Moroccan friends will also attest to this good weather means like deep laundry weather like you change like the big uh, sheets and yeah. like the the comforters have to be go out into yeah. the sun so you know what I mean like this yeah. idea of of like bringing <clears throat> the life that is outside right into the inside uh, and the bringing and then taking what is inside into the outside. outside yeah yeah so it's like this this interchangeable like way of of like of like of cross contaminating where right. life is <laughs> right um but also we would go through like deep cleaning where we have to get up get rid of uh the clothes that we haven't been mm. wearing um like uh, papers that we don't need anymore. Right, like right, why is that right. even existing? But also we lived in a in a small apartment in Morocco, and <clears throat> my brother and I shared uh, shared the room, so we we didn't have the mm. space for a lot of things. Right. Um, and also, if if 
if it can be given away or if it can become a hand-me-down to my cousins right, or right, whatever, right. It, it would go. Um, and if it can't, then it would either be like sold to, um, we have people going down the street who right. collect right, 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 and stuff. Right. Yeah. Or whatever it is, we just would go through that process of, you know, like getting, getting, getting the rid old, of things. yeah, out. But also revisiting all of those things that, for example, if my mom wants to give a sweater out and I'm like, no, don't give it out. I love it. And she's like, well, you haven't been wearing it. Now I have to wear it. Now I actually yeah. do wear it. Right. And so it. Mm. It, like she makes me go through the joy of wearing it even though, yeah. you know it's annoying yeah. Then, yeah. so that's one way in which I protect my space I do love um, just purging out whatever it is that I don't need or that I don't need anymore um, another way I do protect my space is and by space there's there's there are two ways to looking at space there's a physical space and right. then there's the mental space right um, and one does feed into the, so the, for the physical space, that's how I protect it. And I read, um, there's a book actually that I read where an artist somewhere literally would put up a sign <clears throat> saying, if it is not, um, at risk of like death, if it is not like a complete emergency, mm -hmm. don't even ring the bell. Hmm. So no one would be like, not even the male person. Would, ring the bell. would be allowed to so when she is in that space in that physical space of creativity right. she would truly hibernate and she would not allow any person to enter that physical right. space right. and interrupt that creativity interesting now for the mental space i think taking breaks like you mm -hmm. know the usual yeah taking breaks yeah. having me time being around friends being around friends feed off of your creativity and i like that you mentioned the outside and the inside because it reminds me of how nature is reflective of of our <clears throat> of our personal spaces and what's going in uh, inside of our minds too because one of the things that my husband mentions to me which um which is related to what you're saying about this hibernation is that the seasons are a reflection of that too. Mm, mm. So like winter is mm. a season of hibernation. Yeah. And so it's almost like this reminder. It's not even a reminder. It's like forcing you to be in hibernation so <laughs> that you can cultivate that creativity, mm. that you can create things that you can uh, draw inside and, and reflect. And then when the spring comes, then you mm, can, then you bloom, then you bloom and you can release that which mm. you've created. Mm. But also going back to permission, sometimes I'm here in, in this house and usually, you know, usually I feel very, I, I feel, I feel geared towards, um, towards delving into my creative right. energy when I am here. Right. But sometimes I just feel like, no, 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 no. I need to go to a cafe and I, it needs to be. You know, a cafe with specific features, like, you know, it has to have bright colors. I'm, right. not, I'm not going to a cafe that is dark. Um, and, you know, I, it needs to be a cafe where no one is. Um, I'm the only one in that cafe. <laughs> and I don't want a cafe where they play loud. So I right, become right. so specific about, but really what I am doing is putting obstacles right. into my way towards creativity mm -hmm. rather than just allowing it and giving it permission to just right. find me. Right. And instead, it's like, it's like the story of the the like Baqarah. Yeah. Like in in the in the Quran, there's a story about you know like people who were anyway they were supposed to find a cow and then they were like what kind of cow? what kind of cow what color what color is the what cow age? what is it's it? like it, they were like asking too many questions about this cow <coughs> as opposed to just finding a cow <laughs> <laughs> like so, going straight to the point as opposed to like making yeah. it more difficult for yeah. yourself yeah and I find myself even if mm. I do find this ideal spot I go there and all I do is nothing I feel the same way and you know how I feel like that in my own home because now like I live some I live in a place that has different spaces that I could be in and so it's like and Ismail always makes fun of me because I have to organize the room in a certain way yeah. or yeah. it has to look a certain way yeah. or if I'm in my bedroom the bed has to be made in a certain yeah. way if I'm in my sitting yeah. room the light has to be shining in a certain way and I have to be sitting in yeah. a way that the glare is not on my computer and I there's like all these things that go yeah. into it. And a whole hour might go by. Yeah. And the next thing you know, you're tired and you're going to sleep. Exactly. Yeah. And then you're like, well, that was nice. I, I cleaned up this space. I wonder where that comes from, though. Like, I wonder why 
I wonder if if we are I wonder if we are influenced by the things that we see around us or the aesthetics that we see around us or if this has been like an, an age old problem. I think it's been an age old thing. I think that humans are naturally drawn to things that are aesthetically pleasing. Mm. Like I don't think we can take that out of our, of our nature. Or maybe it was drawn to difficulty. We just want to make it hard. <laughs> you know, maybe, you know, it could be a couple of things. It could be, on the one hand, it could be um, we're blocking ourselves from doing things because there are some other inner realities that mm. there may be self-doubt or there may be, yeah. you know, like these other feelings or these other things that we may have to deal with. Mm. And it's manifesting mm. in these habits that we have. Which brings me, I love the fact that you brought up doubt because so my, one of my favorite thinkers is Albert Otto Hirschman and he He's actually the person that Malcolm Gladwell draws most of his um, ideology from. Okay. Um, and so when he died in 2013, uh, Malcolm Gladwell wrote a piece called The Gift of Doubt. Hmm. So actually, the way we run away from doubt right. is the same way we're running away from our best selves. Because, when you, because doubt is what actually gets you to that creativity. Wow. So his argument is that nothing ever happened when you are removing obstacles and removing doubt and removing all of those things that we want to get rid of. But everything happens after you embrace that doubt and you delve into it and you dig deeper. Interesting. Yeah. And that is when creativity wow. happens. It's not that you like you're like you set the stage and you go into an aesthetically pleasing place. You're in a in a mentally prepared um uh, uh, mindset, mindset and yeah. it's not no that's not how that's like that's it's not it's not like it, it doesn't creativity does not work that way mm. I can't just say be creative and then and you then are creative yeah. no you have to go through struggle <laughs> you have to go through struggle <laughs> yeah. this is this is truth and I feel like wow you have to go through struggle there's so much going on in my mind right now because <laughs> so much of our our culture here in America comes from its black culture, right? Music and all these different genres of music that we have and art forms that we have and dance that you have. It's coming from struggle. Yeah. 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 And because of that, there's so, there's like floods and floods mm. and floods mm. of creativity mm. and, and creation. Yeah. It's the hibernation. It's the hibernation that, the struggle is like the metaphor for the hibernation. Right. Like you have to go through, things have to germinate. You have to ferment. Right. And then after that, then you, then, then you explode. Right. Then you bloom. It's the, the blooming or yeah. the coming out yeah. from it. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> this girl, this girl right here. Summer workout equals washing the blankets. Yes. What is the name of the book? What's the name of the book that you mentioned about creativity? It's, um, Christina said yes. About creative. So it's not a book about creativity, but it is a writer. Um, and the, the the writer's name is Albert O or Otto O T T O mm -hmm. Hirschman H I Hirschman. Um, and he wrote many many books. One of them is the philosopher, the great philosopher, I think. One of his books, but if you go and just read the article, like it summarizes all of his ideology in his life and his relationship with his wife as well. Mm -hmm. They were a power couple, definitely. I'll post that. I'll post a link yeah. to it. And um, yeah, and so he talks about <clears throat> he talks about these uh, uh, small ideas. Mm -hmm. So so creativity does not happen after you delve in after you specialize. Mm -hmm. So you don't just like dig deeper into one thing. And that's when you get creative. No. Right. It is actually when you have these, he calls them les petites idées. He, was, he also spoke, he's, anyway, long story short, he spoke about small ideas as the way you build up to creativity. Wow. Yeah, so when you yeah. said there's a lot going on in my mind, right. that is, that is yeah, creativity. so when you feel like your mind is like clogged and you need to you like, need, you get, need all to, those yeah, get it out. all out and stuff, that's when you know you're on the right path. <coughs> so wow. basically, this is another way for me to <laughs> tell myself 
it's okay to struggle. Keep going. Something good is gonna happen. Yeah. It's it's another way for me to like chill. And that <laughs> I mean, I feel like that's what the creative process is too, right? The creative process isn't just one idea that you're moving with. And for you, if you're working with materials, you if you were just stuck on one idea, you probably wouldn't create something that's really mm. functional or really aesthetically <laughs> pleasing or or what have you. It's the other ideas that mm. you have, the trial and error that you yeah. go through. And the culmination of that brings you to something yeah. that is, yeah. you know, the final product. Mm -hmm. There's even struggles to find a struggle to get creative, like writer's <laughs> block. <laughs> I mean, that goes back, right, to finding finding that right space or finding the thing that's going to be most conducive. Oh, I'd like some too. Finding the space that's going to be most conducive to creativity. And whether that be a physical space or whether that be a mental space. Thank you so much. Look at this. Is this from Morocco? Yeah. Wow. This is home. This, this is, is home. home. This is home. <laughs> this is So this is what I was going to go to next because our topic today is about home and the creative self. So we're talking a little bit. We've talked about space. We've talked about creativity. And one of the things that when we're talking about space, the space that you're creating in, like for instance, right here, your apartment, you're trying to create a sense of home or mm -hmm. a sense of belonging or a sense of um, feeling like you're the center mm -hmm. or feeling like it's the right place mm -hmm. for you, mm -hmm. right? So I feel like there is something very much related between where you create the space that you create in and how you feel towards that space, mm -hmm. whether you feel at home or you don't. Mm -hmm. Because if you're disconnected, if you don't feel at home there, then I wonder if that hinders creativity. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's a because it's a struggle, it's a push towards creativity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's See, I never know how to answer that question about home because it's it's very it's very relative. Sometimes I have to be somewhere completely new where I am completely disoriented to find myself. Mm. You know the whole thing about getting lost to find yourself, whatever, cheesy, but yeah. it's true. It's right. true. When you right. are in a completely new place, um, there's a sense of reinvention, a right. sense of, um, there's, a, there's a sense of, of navigation, you know, that is, that is right. physical. That, that you want to do inwards, right. but that you're doing outwards as well, right? Mm -hmm. But then um, I feel like the times where I felt like I was home were really tiny moments where I, for example, I had to fill out my emergency contact and like I knew right away who it was. That feels like home, mm. you know, because yeah. for the longest time being away, and a lot of international students actually here in America would tell you the, the yeah. same thing. Like, yeah. We don't know how to fill those forms because we don't have anyone here. Right. So, you know, next emergency right. contact I will tell you is across the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah. That's the number that I know by heart. Yeah. But then when you start knowing those answers right away, it, feel, it starts feeling like home, uh. you know. When, for example, when the first time I met you, mm -hmm. It didn't really feel like home. Right. When I was at your house, it didn't feel like home. Yeah. But now I know exactly the way to your house. You can put mm -hmm. me anywhere around the east side, I will find it. Yeah. That feels like home. You know, or like the turn right. of the street or or I don't know, like a like a like a like one sock that you have you don't have the other one. You have only one sock, but that one sock traveled with you for a long time and you remembered yeah. that you know, that one time you wore it. I don't, for some reason I'm thinking of socks now. <laughs> But, you know, it just, it yeah. really just happens in those really <coughs> small instances that draw a smile or a frown or, or a tear and it, it kind of shakes your heart and moves mm. it in ways that are nostalgic, hopeful, whatever it is. And that's, that, that feels like home. Wow. Can I show you something? <laughs> she said nostalgic or hopeful. Y'all see this? Nostalgic or hopeful. <laughs> Yeah, I literally wrote this 40 minutes we're, ago. We're meant to be friends. That's it. We're friends forever. Feelings of, feelings of nostalgia and feelings of hope. 
and I will add to that feeling of, well, I guess hopefulness has that, um, the feeling of knowing where you are or what your, not necessarily role, but I'll use role for lack of better words, what your role is mm -hmm. in a place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, the... Or your position, or your, whether that be like a physical thing or a mental thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, and for me, I always change my physical space. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm always moving the couch. I'm always... You are, it's always in a different place every time I come over. <laughs> always moving things around me it's very very important and again I, ha I have this from my mom she always moves things around um, because we didn't have necessarily the means to change everything so we would cook the same things uh -huh. but she would give it a whole new meaning just mm. by switching switching things around and just like and it feels like a new place it just feels like a new place and I love it and I'm almost addicted to that feeling which which always made me feel like I need to I need I need that change I need the, what is it about that change you need? The the that feeling, mm. the feeling of the, it's like when like the feeling of the resettling dust. Mm. You know when you shake the yeah. snowball, and then you like and to like, watch it settle down. You have to shake it first. This girl's so deep. <laughs> you were meant for digging deeper. <laughs> <laughs> These analogies of hers, and. Everybody here is just popping. Look at this. <laughs> How would you define creativity? I. Why are you cornering me like this? <laughs> <laughs> Dan's a good one. Mm. Good question, Dan. I think it is. Let's read this. I think it is omnipresent regardless of your external environment. More about using our own fork to see what is or may be there for you to find. Enjoying this conversation so much. Hey, to my North African sis. Yay. That wasn't my Wait, definition who is that? either. Who was the other North Mona. African? Mona, Mona, Mona. Um, that wasn't my definition either. <clears throat> I collect globes. Tony said he collects oh. globes. Where are they? I haven't seen a globe in your oh, house. Oh, yeah, he does. <laughs> like tuning fork. Okay. Mm. Hmm. Oh, my gosh. Tuning? Hmm. Like... You know, strings finding home. Yeah. Tuning strings. Yeah. It's finding sound. Finding sounds. <laughs> it's, it's, we're still talking about home, I guess, but it's, it's almost like going back to something too. Like that's the nostalgic mm -hmm. aspect of it. As you're going back to something or you're recalibrating something, tuning something so that the different parts of that thing, whatever it may be that we're referring to when we talk about home, are seamless, mm. or they they match with one another, or they fit yeah. in the right way, or yeah, or don't, and you have to figure it out, and you have, it's. Dan said yes, exactly. All of these, honestly, all of these. So Tony, my husband is taking this class with um, with this beautiful human being, with Ali, mm -hmm. and they have been exploring. Um, Art identity. Yeah, the identity of art and how right. <clears throat> it's it's a it's a it's a class on art in Sufism. Right. And uh, <coughs> and something really stuck with me when Tony was reading one of the one of the readings that mm -hmm. Ali sent them, and it really stuck to me how how there's there's a divine there's a divine um, there's a divine presence in us. Right. You know, if you are a Christian, you say we have been made in the image of God. Right. <clears throat> if you are Muslim, you know, we have this sense of nafs that is right. from you right. know, God. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know about Judaism, and I should know, but I have not, I've, I have never really, like, researched it. Yeah. But, but, but this idea that we are part of something divine, mm -hmm. and we don't know how to express it. Mm -hmm. And all of these man-made ways of expressing which is language and, mm -hmm. and writing are not enough so there's always something that is that is too divine to be captured and that's when we explode in art mm. expression so it's really it's really a, a divine energy right. wanting to wanting find a, the divine 
right? Want so it to be known. To go back, to find the familiar. Mm. You said the, the common band that you just said? Yeah. So yeah. it's wanting to go back and the way, the way, and it, it will eventually go back, I guess. Yeah. But, but the way that journey emancipates is, uh-huh. is, is through that expression. It's wow. through that like, okay, I'm going to explode into sound. I'm going right. to explode into painting. I'm right. going to explode into, um, into, make, into form, into shape, into whatever it is. Mm-hmm. But, I, I'm, but it's, it's going gonna, it's it's gonna to do it. It's so interesting because um, in Islamic tradition, one of the names of God is to compel or to agitate. The one who agitates Mm -hmm. or the one who compels. And I feel like that's what our expression is, is we get compelled or we get agitated Mm -hmm. or there's this this moment of a song just came to me or an idea just came to me or wouldn't it be so cool if wouldn't it be so dope if I did Mm -hmm. this or if I created this and it just has to come Mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. And and then afterwards, it's the human. So so it comes out. Right. And then the carrying of it, Mm -hmm. it's the that's the human part. Mm -hmm. So so. Gosh, you're taking me places, huh? Um, so it's like, it's like because because it can just stay as an idea, and most of us have a gazillion ideas right. today, right? But then, but then, how does it come to to life? Right. That's that's the human. That's the human that's, aspect. Yeah, that's the human. That's that carries true. It out. There has to be. Wow. So there, there we're saying that there's a balance between that which is divine and that which is human so to speak Mm. there's sort of this this intertwining of the two of them Mm. and i feel like that's the same thing with nature and things that are man-made like there are things that are natural and then there are things that are man-made but we feel i feel like this the spaces that i'm most attracted to are ones that bring both of those elements together Mm. Mm. yeah and again i mean i'm just I'm just speaking my mind now. I, I don't know. I might be... I mean, know? that's what this is. Yeah. It's speaking your mind. And you're offering me the space to do that, so thank you. You're welcome. That's a space. So, do you feel like... Um, wow, I just got a text message. Power is back <clears throat> on. Yay! <laughs> Yay! My house is power. <laughs> when we talk about home, we talked about hope. We talked about nostalgia. We talked about space. Um, what about in terms of finding the process of finding home Mm. and the process of being connected versus disconnected when it comes to home Mm. and how that affects your creative process? Because you have a lot of experience with this because you've moved a lot Mm. and you've lived in different places. Mm -hmm. So it's, and I imagine each place that you live, if you're spending a, a large chunk of time there, it takes some time to feel connected again. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it definitely does. Um, so to rephrase your question, um, you're asking about the process of finding. Mm-hmm. Mm. The process of finding and how that affects your creative self and your creativity. And maybe it's the process of finding or maybe it's it's that process of feeling disconnected when you move somewhere, mm. right? Because there's two parts of it. When you move somewhere, I'm, there's that feeling of disconnection and then hopefully connection. Mm, yeah. I don't know why, but I'm thinking of missing, like this idea of missing. Mm. This idea of like, I, I would, because this, this has happened to me so many times. Like I would connect to a place. I would arrive into a place and absolutely embrace it right. and like, give my fullest to it, explore it, be there, be present for it and in it right. and around it and let it really like just take over me. Right. 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 Um, and then I would crash and that's mm. when I miss. That's when I start missing. That's when I start missing my mom. Right. That's when I start missing, um, rock and tea. That's when I start missing, um, whatever, like, uh, South African uh, fast food, that's when I, whatever it is, that's when I start really feeling this, um, this, this finality of <coughs> never being able to go back. Like, I, ne- I can never go back to South Africa and be exactly with all of the people that I want there. Right. You know, I'll have to be super rich and convince them to come and pay for their flights. 
not going to happen anytime right. soon anyway, right? Right, right. So, um, if I, even if I go back home and my mom and my dad are both still there, right? Right. Uh, we, we still live in that house, right? So home is Morocco. Home is Morocco. Yes. Okay. But... Am I still, like, it's, it's it's still not the same, you know? My right. dad wears glasses now. He didn't used to wear glasses. It's not the same. <laughs> you know? When yeah. did that happen? There's, right. there, there are and that happened when you weren't there. I was not there. I was not there. Yeah. Um, whatever it is, like, you know, the first thing I do when I go back home to Morocco is I go around the kitchen. I look at all of the new utensils that my mom has. And I love cooking. So I go and look at all the new utensils and I open the fridge. Mm. Is she is she getting new products without me knowing? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> this feeling of like, how dare you? How dare you explore something new? Right. And so this feeling of missing home that that is so final. Right. And it is so discouraging. Mm. And when it get when it takes over me, um it exhausts me. Mm. It, re- it empties me. Right? Interesting. And it only happens after that excitement. Like, I get so super excited about a place, and I embrace it and all that stuff, and then I'm like, <sighs> It's like this high that you have. Yeah. And yeah. after that high, there has to be a crash. Yeah. And then I crash, and then I give it time, and then I'm like climbing up the ladder of energy mm-hmm. again, and then I'm, I'm full-blown exploring again. And You're a that's... snow globe. <laughs> You're literally explaining yourself as a snow globe. <laughs> Like, you're all excited. Yeah. And then the dust settles down a little bit. And then you need yeah. someone to and jolt then, you again. Yeah. And I cut my hair. And, and, I, <laughs> and I, you know, it's like, it's, it's really, really odd. But, but I, it's really, it, and I'm just realizing it now that it's really been a cycle. Because I can pinpoint moments of, of that missing. Mm. Where different people have been. Most recently, my husband has been there living that with me, right? right. But then before I got married and before I knew Tony... It was, it was, it was friends that I allowed into that moment, mm. right? It was my friend Rosie or my friend Brittany or Nandi or Jerry or, you know, Kinza. I can well, think of like that. so many people who have, who Wait, have, that. yeah, who have held that space for me to be on the low. Mm-hmm. But that's, but that's also to allow me to like. To like to get there again, but isn't that also home? Yes, because you're sharing it. You're being vulnerable with someone, and if you didn't have that feeling of vulnerability with this person, mm. you would feel even more disconnected. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. That is so true. Yeah, <clears throat> it is. Yeah, it's like um, yeah, it's. It's people who are not afraid to allow you to be fully broken. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And, and and help and help you and help you make sense of that brokenness in a way that feels familiar. Mm. Which it's a really twisted yeah. thing. <laughs> it's like but... it's it's almost like the way we say there's beauty in pain. Now for but the there longest, is. Yes. At first glance, when you hear that for the first time, that's complete... It sounds like abuse. Yes. It sounds like... It sounds like not a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But then you live it, and then you reminisce on that vulnerability that you've been allowed, and that's what makes it beautiful. Yeah. There was was an event that happened through the Hub Foundation in California and Oakland, and Amir Suleiman, who's this amazing poet... Uh, was sharing some of his poetry, and in one of his lines, he talks about this beauty that comes in violence or in pain, in in the in the act of breaking. And he gave an example of the coconut, and how is it that you can get the sweetness that's inside of the mm. coconut except by breaking mm. it? There's yeah. no way that you would get that sweetness without the violent act mm. of it breaking. Yeah. Wow. I just had this imagery right now in my mind because. You know that's what parents do. That's the, that's your first home. That's your mother is your first home, right? Right. And so that's what your mom does when you're on a tantrum, being a little, you know, spoiled <laughs> child. You know, she might she might give you a smack or whatever it is that she right. gives you. I'm sure she is going to hug you, and then you're crying your heart out. And that that brokenness that allows those tears to come out 
is that that uh, it's like that creativity that flows. It's like something that's within you that has to flow out. I would say that's just pain trying to disappear. That's, <laughs> that's just pain. It's a flat out but, pain. <laughs> but I feel like there but is... Afterward, afterwards, you want to please her. Afterwards, you're like, oh, you know. And that's when you're like, all right, let me do something good. <laughs> you can tell I was not a... I was not a behaved child. <laughs> Let's take some comments because we got so much going on here. Yeah, searching for what's missing. Exactly, it's the search. Um, Nando's. When the high of newness goes down, we are left with our base comfort zone. And I think we're also left with ourselves. When when that high of newness comes Nando's is the South African fast food that I was talking about. Uh, because... Um, I feel like one of the things about moving to a different place is after the high of like figuring out like where things are and and exploring and whatnot, then it's that feeling of well, who am I in this place? Mm. Yeah, that's like one. I've explored this place, mm. but what does that mean for who I am? Because I think that anytime you move, it makes you reassess who you are because now this, the same people aren't there. So the same assumptions or judgments that people have of you or mm. preconceived notions people mm. have of you, none of those are reflecting <clears throat> on you anymore. Yeah. There's this thing that I've been f thinking about for a while and I really want to put it into a physical format mm. of like, if I were, basically if I were to speak about my identity and that, how that changes mm -hmm. and how I am a different person in different backgrounds. So... You know, there's like a th the theory of color. Like mm -hmm. if you put, if you put, um, uh, if you put a, a circle or whatever it is, if you if you put the color blue mm -hmm. on a yellow background, it's gonna be very different than if you put the exact same shape of blue mm -hmm. on a red background. Right. Right. And that blue is not gonna look the same anymore. Right. It's it's, it's the exact the same, same color. blue. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Now, as we move around places, imagine that background is yellow, but it is a little transparent. Mm. Like, you know, it's a transparent plastic sheet that is yellow. Interesting. And then you add another background, which is a transparent sheet of red. Uh, you put the two of them together, they are a different background. Right, right. But you're still the same blue. You know what I mean? Wow. And I'm trying to capture this. If any, if anyone can help me do this, I would be extremely grateful. I've been trying to capture this because those backgrounds also have smells. They have textures. Right, right. So how do you really like, these textures, sometimes they can be felt through mm -hmm. other backgrounds. Sometimes right. they are blocked wow. by backgrounds. And mm. it's like, but you're still the same. Right. But you're really not. But you're really not. No. Because each time you've added a different layer, mm. you're going to look a little... Because you're reflecting those colors. Yeah. 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 So, mm. so is it is it translucent but <coughs> stiff? So I can't, I can't feel the softness of the yellow? Mm -hmm. Is it, is it translucent and, and like malleable? So, so even if I am against a soft background, the background behind it is rough. And so I can still feel those remnants uh, of roughness and and uh, and aggression. Right. So you, do you see the image? Yeah, yeah. It's so hard to capture. <laughs> I know you're going to. The fact that you've been thinking about it for a while, and when it comes out, it's going to be amazing. I know that already. <laughs> um, Noni says, I felt that way when I went home for the first time after a month. So my sister just moved out. Mm. And, hey, I, and I would say the same. I feel like, you know, I moved out a while ago. It's been almost 10 years. But every time, my mom's home. She lives like 40 minutes away from me. But my mom's home is still home to me. But if you ask me where certain things are, they're always changing. So I don't mm. always know where things are. Yeah. And I get annoyed. I'm like, this drawer used to have this. <laughs> like... <laughs> the peeler used to be in this drawer yeah. and it's not here yeah. anymore. Yeah. Or like yeah. the cheese cutter used to be here and it's mm. not here anymore. And and you know what? I do that with my place, right? But I don't allow my my parents to do it with their place. I don't mm. allow those. It's like I have to go and rediscover and allow, okay, it's fine. It's fine for you. It's fine for you, dear knife, to live in this drawer. You know, it's almost like I have to give it, per I have to the be the permission. Yeah. You have to be the center yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah. 
But you, A, you have to be the center of it, but then it's also attached to that nostalgic feeling. Mm. Because your home, if it's attached to that feeling of nostalgia, if something has changed, then the thing that you've been feeling nostalgic to or the thing that you've been missing is not there anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Or it's not the same anymore. Yeah. Oh, Liam is here. Look at oh, this. Yeah. So many people. Yeah. Historically, I feel that uh, that way when I'm leaving the people I care about. Yeah, definitely, because I would say people are, we attach home to people, for sure. I feel that way so often with ideas, places, and people. I struggle with consistency after the high of newness goes down. Mm. Look, Ismail said power is back on. <laughs> Thanks, babe. <laughs> that's, that's her husband. <laughs> <laughs> Instantaneous feedback. Your mm. comment is spot on, Christina. Going to uh, going to get the light landing from a flight. What? Dynamics. What? Are you guys talking to each other on this? Is it like I feel like our husbands are speaking a different so language. So actually, there's a story behind instantaneous feedback. So Tony and I were in uh, Mauritius, and we were, we were visiting friends there, and we were talking about our childhood, <coughs> and Tony was. I think he was the only non-African in the room and we were all having so much nostalgia about the way our parents used to correct us, mm. <laughs> right? Okay. And so, so many of, uh, of us could relate to our parents looking around them, finding something and throwing it at you, <laughs> right? And so obviously it's not like a hard metal or like a, a vase or, you know, you're not going to, it's a pillow like. or what, a slipper, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and so this one person who this was a all of them are involved in uh, coaching and lead and self leadership okay. work, and they were like, that's like instantaneous feedback. <laughs> it's like you do something and you instantaneously and right know, away. yeah. And so we were all nostalgic to this painful experience <laughs> that we shouldn't be. <laughs> you know what's so crazy? This is like on a whole different tangent now. Because that painful experience, even though it's not that painful of an yeah, experience, right? Yeah. But it's that nostalgia to something that was um, like a regular part of your home or a regular <laughs> part of like <laughs> your life at that time. And it's so interesting but because this is also, this is about to be, you know, going down a different path altogether when it comes to abuse or when it comes to the types of uh, negative patterns that we're attracted to in other people, if we've come from households that are abusive, or if we've come from situations or like relationships in which there's been a pattern, mm -hmm. we're so used to it that it becomes home, mm, unfortunately. Yeah, and yeah. we have to disconnect ourselves yeah, from it yeah. so that it's not home. Because <laughs> yeah. that feeling of nostalgia can be linked to something that is positive and affirming, or it could be linked to something that's really destructive. Yeah, yeah. Um, the dynamics of one word answers and the depth and texture you were talking about, lol. Uh, mom says, I change things around. Oh, my mom is watching, hey mom. Uh, I change things around so that you can keep coming back and get excited to find new things in the house. <laughs> so she knows. So she they does, know. they oh my do gosh. know. <laughs> Christina said, LOL, Molly, I love that your mom is responding. <laughs> Question, do you use art to get closer to home? Love hearing about identity and dislocation and home. Think this would be something at Deandra and at um, Tayan would be interested in. Mm, yeah. Mom said, so you can learn to live with change, Betty. Mm. Betty means daughter. I, I, I like that question because <clears throat> when I left... When I left Morocco, I did not like traditional kaftans, like the traditional mm -hmm. clothing. I, I, I wanted to be like you know, like I wanted the modern and right. the, and the. <clears throat> I didn't want anything that was relating, relating me back to Morocco. I leave Morocco and that's all I think about. Mm. All of a sudden, I'm like, I'm proud. Do you know about the centuries-old <laughs> tradition of wearing kaftan? Do you know about tea? Tea coming yeah. from China? No, it came from Morocco. You know, like things that are like really, like really nonsensical. And that nostalgia right. became almost like a, a self-defense. It's like, this is how I affirm myself. I affirm myself by the things that make me who I am because right. I am contrasted. Now, right. I'm, I'm, I'm in an environment that contrasts who I am, right? 
Mm-hmm. If I go back to Morocco, I'm like, yeah, but we haven't been innovating in these things. You know, the traditional things, we haven't been innovating in them. I go out, no, all of these things are great. You see, wow. you see what I'm saying? So it's like, it's, it's, um, now you can fa- find, um, uh, you can find me learning about Islamic geometry. Yes. So, so <clears throat> then I, I, it's just, it's like now I, I always keep wanting my art to have s- something from my lived experience. Mm. So it can be, so, so apparently when abstract art came to the, came to North Africa, and mm-hmm. I will speak about North Africa because I'm afraid to say the Middle East and the North African region, but, but once, once abstract art was, was making its way to that region, to North African region, uh, the people from Europe were accusing artists in North mm. Africa, no, this is not your art. This is mm. not yours. Why are you doing it? Why are you doing abstract? It's not yours. And guess what they were doing? What they started doing is they would, they would finish the, the painting. They would finish whatever it is that they are artistically invest, invested into. They would finish it, and then they would add one thing, and it would be one letter that is calligraphy, mm. Arabic calligraphy. Mm. It would be... It, the whole thing would be using the same materials, the same methods, the same whatever that the West was using. Right. But they would add one letter that signified their identity, and bam, that's now ours. Mm. Like, you know, take that away from me. And I feel like I'm doing the same thing. Now that I am here, I feel like I, I wish if I learned, you know, better dance moves from whatever, like dancing on South African house when I was in South Africa. And I'm mad at myself for not doing that. Mm. Because when I'm out there like dancing or whatever, I want to be pulling out of those moves. You know? Right, right. So I I want that, I I want my lived experience to be expressed in my art. And Uh. I definitely do that. I bring in the calligraphy. I bring in, um, like whatever, whatever it is. I bring in the, yeah, I do. I bring in the food. Um, the way I taught it, everything has to be has to have something for 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 me to feel like it is mine Mm -hmm. yeah that makes sense because you you want it to be you want whatever art you're creating or expressing to be authentic to who you are Mm, right and those uh those experiences that you've had and those relationships that you have with different people as well those are part of who you are now yeah yeah, very much. And you can't separate yourself from those things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's almost as if that even though there's that feeling of disconnection when you move from one place to the next, when you move to the next place, it's almost like you have to move to feel more connected to the place before. Right? This is why I'm saying <laughs> like, it's so twisted. And most of the time, I told this to my cohort. I am a Challenge Detroit fellow. The applications are open. Please go apply. But I told this to my cohort. I always tell them, I am, most of the time I am confused. Most of the time I am confused as of, and what I mean by that is that I am confused as of how to pinpoint mm. answering the question on identity. Mm. I, I can't just, I can't just It can't be like a one answer, one word answer. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's always yes and, yes and, yes this and, yes that and right. this. It's right. never, it's never an absolute. Right. And yeah, and I, I guess I just, you, at some point you just live with the confusion. <laughs> but that there's so much beauty in that confusion because it's it's bringing together so many peoples and so many cultures and so many different ideas and way of thinking. And I feel like because you have allowed yourself to be immersed in different places that have different norms and different ways of thinking, mm-hmm. that it makes you more expansive. It makes mm-hmm. you more open. It makes you more tolerant. It makes you, it and makes more you creative. activated. Mm. You're, you're like, you're on. You're constantly activated. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're constantly there's activated. Definitely, uh, it's, um, yeah. And this makes me feel like everyone we meet in our lives just, you know, if this is the amount of, if this is the amount of, 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 of confusion and questions that I am living with, mm-hmm. you know, everyone I meet has those questions. So right. it's like, 
Do you think everyone has those questions? I, in one way or another, yes. Yeah. yeah. It's either around, we can't escape ourselves. Right. We can only be trapped in right. ourselves. And then we, we, we just learn how to, to make that, you know, mm. that stuckness either a positive thing or, or yeah. a negative, or like we choose to tame it or not yeah. tame it. Yeah. Whatever it is, like we learn to live with it. And so we always have those questions. Mm. And it could be, am I thin enough? You know, am I eating, am I, am mm. I eating enough? It could be, you know, things around, you know, image, uh, okay. self-image. Right. Or it could be, um, am I smart enough mm. to whatever, like apply to this university? Uh, am I, it's always this, we all, we're always living with There's confusion. these questions that we have about ourselves, which I think comes back to that doubt that we have. Yeah. And a lot of times with identity too, it's, it's doubting who you are. Maybe because it's doubting your true connection to a certain place. Mm. Yeah. Like if you move somewhere and you've been living there for a few years and you feel like you're a part of the fabric of that society or that community or that city or that country, does that mean that your relationship to it is true mm. and it's authentic? Can you claim that space? Can you claim it if you weren't from there, but now you are of that community? Yeah. And what does that even mean? We have questions of how do you work through artistic blockage? Maybe that drawing away was necessary really to really live the traditional culture. Mm. Yeah, I agree. Because I think that I went through something similar. You can't grow without self-doubt. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And that's one of the things we mentioned too. Um, <clears throat> that feeling of, t uh, to your, your question about Drawing away is necessary. Um, I feel like growing up, when I was younger, there was a period of time where I didn't speak Urdu because maybe I was embarrassed or because I felt like, no, I'm American, and if I speak Urdu, then people are going to think I'm not American. And I was born and raised in Detroit, or I was born in Detroit. I've been living in the States, and like this is my country, blah, blah, blah. And I, the older that I got, the more I wanted to be connected Mm -hmm. to that culture. I wanted to be connected to that part of who I am, to maintain the language, to maintain the food, to maintain the clothes, right? Like if I was younger, I would never go on a live video and be wearing mm -hmm. a thobe like this. Mm -hmm. Like beautiful. Thank you. Like I'm wearing it because I like it. It makes me feel at home. Yeah. It makes me feel comfortable. It's easy and I'm sick and I'm lazy right now. But there, <laughs> right, but there's there's that question of who you are and maybe what other people perceive you mm -hmm. to be too. Yeah. 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 So I am a, I am an immigrant in, in the United States. And, and so your question made me, made me think of, of other immigrants and, you know, like we, <clears throat> <coughs> it's so easy to look from the outside and ask, you know, like, why are people clicking in high schools? Hmm. Why are there, why are, whatever, like the, 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 the Africans or the Asians or the, what, like, you know, plug, right. plug in whatever it is, <clears throat> you know, always hanging out together in college. Hmm. Why are there Muslim neighborhoods slash Polish neighborhoods? Slash, you know, why, right. why do people cluster? And it's so easy from someone from the outside to say, Whoa, this feels so impenetrable to mm. me as someone who's an outsider. Right. You know, why why do they have to do that? Right. Um, and I've I'm definitely guilty of it too. Mm. Like the this but then it's uncomfortable when you are outside, mm. right? And it's like this wanting going back to the center, wanting to be at the center. Right. At that point you don't understand the social cues. Right. You understand you don't understand the spatial cues. Right. So you're not at the center. Mm. Um and so it really right. is making me feel like you know, like immigrant populations and um, the, you know, like how, how do we engage those margins? Right. Well, that's interesting because it feels impenetrable, but you, you mentioned a story earlier about how you and several friends were together and it was, you were all African except for Tony mm -hmm. and everyone was talking about yeah. African parents, mm -hmm. right? So 
even though from an outsider's perspective it seems impenetrable, when you are in a space where you're clustered yeah. with other people who mm-hmm. are from the same place or have the same uh, experiences, mm. there's that feeling of yeah, yeah. So comfort. it's really interesting that you mentioned this because when I was in college, I used to wear the hijab, and um, and and on I am sure on many occasions people did not mind me, did not mind my existence at all. Right. You know, but I minded my existence in there. Mm. And so my projection was, I don't feel welcome. But I'm actually not allowing myself to be welcome. Interesting. That's true. You have to allow yourself to feel welcome or you have to give yourself permission. Yeah. Or you have to just just be, be someone who does not care about... One thing that really, really, really attracted me and my husband, which is something that I totally lacked, he could be in a party, know absolutely no one, and feel completely at ease. Like, he does not... He wouldn't feel bothered. Mm. He wouldn't feel like he shouldn't exist. His existence right. in a space is conditional on nothing. Mm. He always feels like that space can be his. And so that possibility for me was very attractive. Wow. Because I was living on the complete opposite. Right. I was like, no. I've lived yeah. here for four years, but no. This is not my compass yet. Yeah. This is not my community yet. Mm. You know? And, uh, and I know a lot of my friends felt the same way, whether it was in the same university or elsewhere. Right. But yeah, a lot of it was... I think I have that feeling, too, of like, if I go to a space that's new, it's easier to go in that space when you know at least one person in the space. Yeah. There's that comfort of like, that's home, mm. right? Because it's a person <laughs> that is that you know or it's something familiar yeah and it's very real facebook is betting on it like that's why we go to events on facebook because it shows you wow who's it's, going? it's like tazina's going I'm like hey let's go here my friend is going you know that's true <laughs> that's true marketing man <laughs> um let's see a couple more comments before we take off yeah you can't grow without self-doubt wow normally these episodes are only an hour and we've gone over an hour and it just flew by and there's so many people commenting and it's great thank you guys so much for being I here i am extremely grateful for all of your questions and comments and contributions and and uh, allowing me to express myself and be um at home with you mm. and uh, and i and definitely I, feel at home here oh and i and I, I value you i value the fact that you have shown up whether I know you or not, I, I'm very grateful that you've allowed me this moment. To feel at home, wow. To feel at home with people online. Who would have thought? <laughs> Who would have thought that? Dang it, now that you put it that way. <laughs> yeah, it's great because you've got people here who are from all over the world. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And are able to, to connect with one another yeah. in this central space. Great conversation. Yeah. Is there anything that you would like to share with the audience um, of your art <clears throat> and what you create? Um, I actually thought of a piece right before we started recording this. I was not going to share anything. I have a thing against sharing my, my writing when it is an audience that doesn't always understand what I'm saying. But I will do this for the hope that a Moroccan will hear it one day. Uh, <clears throat> while while listening to your podcast. And this is a piece that I had written on May 7th, 2015. And, uh, and it was the time when I finally felt like it is me to wear curly hair. Hmm. That I, when I was seeing myself in the mirror, it looked like me. It didn't look like I was transitioning mm. from like straightening my hair right. to curling my hair. It didn't look like someone that mm. Moroccan beauty did not look like. Mm. You know, you know what I mean. So, um, so this piece is about is for women, for Moroccan women out there, um, and their curly hair. I'm going to get out of the scene. I'm going to let it be just you. Oh, gosh. 
So, I haven't titled this. I don't think I've ever shared this ever before. <laughs> I feel so honored. I feel so honored. I'm going to read it like this. Um, <coughs> نهار يطيح الحجاب ويحش مسين يطيح معاه مول الهيبة والشعن وسليه ماتو تيها الرجلة خلاص الشعر المسدود ما يلقى الطريق المعبدة غير بقانون من مولاتو فايت ضايع فيه طارق بن زياد وبن خلدون والمنصور وذهيباتو موجة تودي سيد السلاطن بموجة اللولة فيها الرحمة والتانية تحلف يا هي في الدنيا ينجاتو فينك يا عيشة مولاة البحور وفينك يا للا الفهرية وفينك انتي يا بنت اليوم تاشكو من نخوة عوضة تحجيراتو من زمان والناظر في خراسكم مبهور احتاج الاستعمار وخلوا في رجالاتكم آثاراتو <تصفيق> عقدهم عقدهم بقلة اللوم وكثرة الفهامة ونساهم في زمانات جدودنا اللي فاتوا أولات البنية يا باهية بحرية تفكرهم في اللي مور البحر يا شعرها شعكاتو حرري راسك من قصة زين ماشي ديالك وانتي ماشي ديالتو بلاش عليك عذاب الليل وعذاب النهار تالفة في شعرك الزغبي تعز عليك الفرحة تعز عليك الفرحة فيه تدفى بتسراح ومعناتو حرري راسك من هدرة اللي ما عرف كين تلموج وكيف ذاك الضحيك على خدك واتاتو الزين ماشي قصة واحدة يختلف فيه المعنى يحير فيه العالم وينسى الشاعر في كلماته شعرك ثورة تحنت الرجال ملحون يمختر جلايل محجب أو معري شعرك بخراس وعز ما تفخر به غير لله ومولاته I like the last part. <laughs> what did you say? Shot it soda. Yeah, shot it soda. Like Your hair yeah. is a revolution. Wow. Could you give like little snippets to people? Um. So this is just talking about waves and curls and how, if you're really really seeking beauty, it is beauty doesn't have one story, mm. and that, and that. And that you can allow others to, to be moved by that by those waves, mm. and to get lost in those curls, wow. and that that is another story of beauty, in itself. Right. And that, and that your curls, are, um, are like pearls on the crown that you want to wear. Yeah, I saw that. And it's it's I don't I don't know. Can it's you read like, that line again about the um, Yeah, yeah, um. So it's like your your self esteem and your education and your self worth is those 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 precious rocks that you can have on your uh, on your crown. A couple yeah. comments. Thank you, friends. This conversation, your poem, gave us such. Gave us so much. Now off to learn Arabic so I can understand it word for word next time. <laughs> Didn't understand a word, but appreciate the passion. Mm. Your hair is a revolution. Love. Yeah. Is there any, do you have any um, last minute thoughts you would like to share with everyone? About home, about the creative self, about your art, about just things that this conversation has reminded you or triggered in your mind? Or message that you'd like to give to the people. I don't know. I just feel like, can I share my feeling right now? Yeah. I just feel like I'm so in love with everything. <laughs> I know. Like, you know that feeling when you have just a good conversation or a good thought or a good line or you right. know, just, you just feel like your heart has expanded and exploded. Right. That's how I feel right now. And yeah, That's and I just, I just want to leave you with that. I just really want to leave you with like an explosion. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what this was. This was this was an explosion, but a good one. Aww. But a good one. Yeah. Well, with that, that's the end of our episode. That's the end of our episode. Thank you so much for being here. 
Um, the episode will be on YouTube and Facebook, and it'll be on my Instagram for the next 24 hours. And then after that, I'll upload it. And then for Hind, I will be linking, you know, stuff about her, anything that you want to share with people yeah. um, about where to find you or a website, all that kind of stuff. Thank you. So you can find her. You can catch up with what she's doing. And with that, that's another episode. I will see you guys next week. Same place, same time. Well, different place because it's going to be at my house. So hopefully, inshallah, we will have power <laughs> next week. Um, but we have power now. Uh, so we'll be back here Tuesdays, 7 p.m. Uh, Eastern time every week. So join the conversations. And if you haven't checked out the website, it's on my um, Instagram bio. The website has all of the past 29 episodes which were really great conversations and it has bios for all of the different guests who've been on and, and the work that they've been doing, um, which is, it's really inspiring. So do check that out. Um, I loved your conversation and loved your poem, even though I didn't understand it and your description. Thank you for this. Amazing. Hin, this was awesome. Thanks for the invitation. Oh. All right, y'all. With that, Thank you all. I love you all. <laughs> goodbye. And if you're on this side of the world, good night. And if you're on the other, good morning. Whatever time it is. Peace, y'all. Bye.